Hey Sugar Snaps, welcome to the Textile Indie YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Brittany, welcome in. If you're an old friend, welcome back, I'm glad to have you. Today I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to spin this wool yarn on this Revolution Fibers drop spindle. This is a top whirl spindle, which means the whirl or the disc is at the top of your spindle staff. An alternative to this style drop spindle would be one where the hook is on the top of the spindle shaft and the whirl is at the bottom and you spin it in this orientation rather than this one. So for this guy, I have a piece of cotton yarn that I'm going to use as my leader yarn. A leader yarn is what you attach your wool to. So I'll take one end and I'm going to tie this around just below the whirl. So I'm just tying this on with a double knot so that it doesn't come loose right down here. So it's tied on right there. And then this drop spindle has a nice little groove in the side. That is where you place the yarn to bring it up and loop it around the hook. So if you see that there, the yarn's coming from under here, under the whirl, through the groove in the side and around the hook. And I wrap it around two or three times depending on what feels comfortable at the time. And then one way to get your leader yarn set up so that it's most comfortable is to tie a little loop. So fold the end back and tie that with an overhand knot so that you end up with a little loop on the end of your yarn. I'm going to back this up a little bit because I actually want to wrap this end around the base of the shaft here a few times so that I can start pre prepping it to wrap my yarn that I spin. And I'm going to do a little bit more because when you put this up around the hook, you've looped that around, you don't want a ton of distance between the hook and the loop that you've just created because you need room to be able to start spinning. So now let's look at the fiber I'm working with. This is merino wool fiber. It's nice and fluffy. This has been hand dyed with this beautiful gray color. And the full roving is a lot, very, a lot of variegation and has a lot of different tones of grays and whites and blacks. Um, this piece just has some medium and light gray in it. You can see those for me. So one thing that I like to do to prepare my fiber for drop spinning is to pre-draft it out just a little bit. And that's where you gently stretch the fibers out so that you have kind of a start to work with. And never cut your fibers, always pull them. And if you're having a hard time getting your piece to come apart, you can grab loosely with two hands and tug like this. And you'll just keep doing this movement until they pull apart. And all those little fibers will line up and pull apart for you. So don't just cut across because that blunts some of the fibers and you'll end up with funky ends sticking up out of your yarn or out of your project. You want the natural texture of the fiber shaft to show up in your yarn. So here I'm pulling just gently loosening up this bundle so that I don't have just one thick mass of fiber. I'm gently pulling this out and I'm not death gripping this. I'm just loosely hanging on to the fiber so that I can pull this out a bit. And now I can even this somewhat. So this now I'm going to roll up into a little ball or a little piece to start out with. Now with the end of this tuft, I'm going to stretch up some fibers, send this end of the tuft through the loop on my drop spindle and bring it up so that I have about two inches of fiber coming from one side and the other and then stretch some fibers out so that they overlap so that there's two layers and the wool is going through this loop. Now choose which direction you're going to spin. If it feels most comfortable to spin toward you, you can do that. If it feels more comfortable to spin away from you, you can do that and you can experiment with both to see what comes naturally. I usually spin towards myself and as I spin, I start to pull the fibers down with one hand, allow the, the drop spindle to spin until it starts to stop or starts to go in the opposite direction. And then I'll give it another twist while I draft more yarn, allow the twist to eat up into that wool and I stop the twist 
by pinching the yarn where the wool starts. So I have the wool in this hand held in this hand. So if you're looking at it from this direction, I'm holding this up like this. The wool is clutched in my three fingers here and I'm holding between my finger, my forefinger and thumb to hold this yarn up. Now I'll pre-draft a little bit more before twisting. Give the drop spindle a twist so that the twist heats up into my fiber. And one more time. And you can see this might look a little bit awkward because I'm sitting down. I have to raise my arm up over my head. Um, my head's gonna disappear, but I'll stand up here for a second. If you stand up, actually first, what I'll go over is once you have so much yarn that your drop spindle is hitting the ground, you can untwist it off your hook and then start to twist this onto the shaft so that it starts to load up underneath the whirl. And you want to leave enough that when you go up the side groove and wrap it around the hook two or three times, you still have about an inch to two inches of the new yarn that you just spun so that you have room to start out with. Now, if I were to stand up, this position with my arms down would feel more comfortable or right in front of your face so that you can look at what you're doing and drafting down towards the floor like this. And I can get a few drafts in with this drop spindle. Depends on your drop spindle and how heavy the whirl is, how much it will spin and how much twist it will put into your yarn. So this has a really nice balance. and lasts a long time because the whirl compared to the shaft weight is pretty big or there's a big difference between the two and so it creates a lot of twist or a lot of spin with one twist of the fingers. Okay, so now I'll wind this back up and I'm going to pre-draft a little bit, kind of unwind my little ball. And again, I have that little ball in my hand of the fiber that I pre-drafted and I'm, I'll just unwind enough that I can work with it and then grip that in my hand like this while I pull with this hand. And then I'll give my drop spindle a twist and draft towards the floor, gently pulling the fibers. And again, stopping the twist from coming up into the wool that's in your hand by pinching the fiber where you want that to stop. Add in a little more twist that strand so it doesn't just fall apart when you start to twist it up. And then I'll untwist that and twist this onto the drop spindle. Loop this around my hook and now I'm set up to go. Now when I pulled on my last bit this tuft came off of the fiber that I was working with so to reconnect it to your fiber bundle, you can take the end, do a little bit of pre-drafting, and then layer it over the end that you have at the top of the hook. Add a little bit of twist so that the twist starts to eat those together, or twists them together, and work your twist up into the fiber so that you can reattach it to your bundle, like so. And then you'll undo the twist on the hook, twist this up onto the whirl like this. So that is the basics of getting your drop spindle set up with a leader yarn and getting started with some spinning. You can load your drop spindle up so that you have quite a bit of yarn on that drop spindle and then slide that off onto a piece of paper or a cone or put something in that center. Um, you can either wind it off or just slide it off in like a little cone. Then spin some more so that you have an even amount times two and then twist those together to create a two ply yarn or do a slightly thicker single which is where you're spinning just one strand of yarn and then use that to do your projects. If you're new to drop spinning, take your time. Know that the drop spindle is probably going to drop on the floor 
quite often as you're getting started. There's a lot to manage with a drop spindle to maintain the twist, to pull the fibers and graft the fibers so that you can have something to spin, and maintaining all of those things while holding the fiber in one hand and the drop spindle managing it with the other. So be patient and work away at it. If you have a good drop spindle like the Revolution Fibers drop spindle or um, any well-balanced drop spindle, then it'll just take some time to figure out the balance and figure out how to manage all the things at the same time and you will eventually get it. It's kind of like patting your stomach while patting your in your head while rubbing your stomach and I think that's how it goes. Doing those two things at the same time can be really challenging but once you get it it's muscle memory. Same thing with spinning like riding a bike. You just have to get to the point where you're comfortable with the different things and can flow easily. And if you want a little bit more in depth on how to drop spin I break down each step and have you practice each hand motion in this YouTube video up here. I'll put the link in the description below to that as well. If you're feeling like this amount of information isn't enough to get you started or set up with your drop spindle, check that video out because I do go through some different uh, exercises so that you can do each movement separately and by themselves so you can get a feel for what that's like. We go over how to pre-draft your fiber, how to spin the drop spindle so that um, just on its own so that you're getting that feel of your, your what your right hand is doing and several other things to help you feel more confident in your drop spinning. Thanks so much for joining me today. Like this video to support my channel. Thanks so much for doing that and I will see you in my next video. Happy making. Bye.